How's it going, Song of Ice and Fire fans? It's Grant from Ye Cats Miniatures bringing you day four, I think, of our house bottom week here at Ye Cats Miniatures YouTube. And today, I'm going back to what I do best. And no, that is not drinking pints of Lemsip, it's painting tutorials. So, let's get stuck into that. Roll credits. We understand that you may not be familiar with the scale 75 range, so we use this handy chart to show you what the equivalents are in a Citadel range. So first up we clean the miniature, and by clean the miniature, I don't mean running a bath, I mean we're going to remove the mould lines and the flash from the miniature with either a scalpel or a mould line removing tool, and then I'm going to mount it onto a paint handle. Now you can use any paint handle from various suppliers, I just use an old paint pot as a blue tack, and pop him on there like that, it does exactly the same thing for a lot cheaper. So let's get this bad boy sprayed. Now I've gone for a light grey undercoat because it's a happy medium between the black and the white undercoat. It doesn't obscure any of the nice detail because it's light enough to see. And we're going for a nice even coat over the whole miniature. Now I've gone for a rainy grey base coat on the skin. And it looks almost vampiric, but it will be made to look more fleshy later on in the tutorial. And it gives us that very pale skin tone that Roos is known for. And then I've gone for Eclipse Grey on the hair. One, because it's the colour hair that Roos is described as having. But two, it forms a nice contrast to the pale skin that Roos has got. And also is a really nice frame around the face. And then I go for a black leather tunic. And I've chosen black leather because it's a nice brandy grey with a hint of red just to help tie the miniature together. And then we go for the House Bolton Pink Cloak. Now I've gone for Vallejo's Wall of Purple because I want it nice and vibrant to really make the miniature pop. And we're looking for thin coats here so we don't drown out the sculpt's natural flow. And be careful not to catch the colours you've already applied. If you've seen any of our tutorials before, you'll be familiar with the next method. I use Arbuckles Brown for all of the leather straps and boots because it gives me a nice base coat for that hard worn leather. And then we go for brown leather on his undershirt because I want to try and keep the miniature nice and earthy outside of the cloak just to really help give it that dark, dingy feel. And then we apply a contrast black Templar by Citadel on the chainmail. I find it gives me good coverage into the deeper recesses when painting something like chainmail. And then we apply black metal onto the armour. I wanted a nice, dark, cold looking steel for Roos, and I'll probably carry this over onto the rest of my Bolton faction, just to give them that really nice, dark look to them, rather than the bright steel we would expect from House Lannister. So, with all the silver done, we can move on to the gold. Now, I've gone for a decayed metal for the same reason as before. We want something to make him pop as a character, so we want to apply some gold. But we're trying to keep the colours washed out aside from the cloak. And no tutorial would be complete without me muttering the words, we add tinderless red, and we're going to apply that to the sword grip. Once that's all done, we can do some dry brushing. Now, we wipe most of the paint off of the brush, so there's very little bit left, as you can see on my hand here. And we're going to just drag this over the chainmail on Roos. And as you can see, and I apologise for the shot, it's quite blurry, but you can make out that it just catches the raised edges on that chainmail, leaving the recesses nice and dark. Once we have all of our base colours on, we can then apply a wash of Army Painter's Dark Tone. Now you can use Known All here, it will give you the same effect, but I choose to mix mine with uh, Vallejo's Airbrush Flow Improver, and it just takes some of the harshness away from the shade, and we apply this over everything on the miniature, other than the face, and we get some good results from this. And as you can see, it's applied quite liberally, but just be careful not to allow it to pull too much in any of the recesses. Just touch it with a damp brush and it should suck back up and you can wipe it off onto a piece of tissue or back into the palette. So here it is with the wash dry. And as you can see, it's done a lot of work for sort of miniature. Then we're going to apply a shade to the skin. Now, this is a two part sepia to one part druco violet to one part water mix. 
And all I'm going to do is just apply it to the face just to give Roos a little bit of warmth back into his skin. The sepia and the Druco Violet should make it look really cool. And with the washes applied and dried, we can call this done, but we're going to go ahead and add some more magic to this miniature. So then we mix Kislev Flesh into the Rainy Grey at a roughly 50-50 mix, just to add some more fleshy tones to his skin. And we apply this to all of the face not shaded by the wash, such as the eyebrows and the nose and the cheekbones. And then we add a bit more Kislev Flesh to the mix, so we're now at a roughly 75 to 25 mix and catch the most extreme facial features such as his cheeks and the tip of the nose. Then we reapply our brown leather as an almost second undercoat trying to miss the recesses shaded by the wash. Then we add some bone white to the brown leather at a roughly 25 to 75% mix and get a good point on the brush. And then we highlight the ridges on the undercoat, leaving some of the last layer showing. So we're looking for a lot thinner lines. We then add in some more bone white at a roughly 50-50 mix and apply some very sharp lines on the most prominent folds. Then we highlight our Eclipse Grey and we apply this to all the larger clumps of hair, leaving only the darkest recesses shaded. And then we add in some rainy grey, so we're at a roughly 75-25% to mix, and start applying to the hair in much thinner lines. Now we're going to start picking out those hairlines, as you can see me doing here. And then we add a tiny bit more rainy grey, we're going to eyeball it a little bit here, and pick the most prominent ridges most likely to catch the light. Then we reapply black leather, avoiding the recesses. So we're just looking to rebase coat the clumps of cloth. And then we add in some rainy grey, and as you can see it just lightens up that mix a little bit. And just start to pick out the more prominent folds on the tunic. Then we add in some bone white, a roughly 50-50 mix, and apply to the sharpest edges of the cloth on the tabard. We reapply Arbuckle's brown to the leather sections, such as the boots and belts, avoiding the recesses shaded by a dark tone. I love Arbuckle's brown when painting leather. It's got that really nice, dark, almost ready tint to it, so it gives it a really nice look. Then we add in some Gobi brown to our Arbuckle's brown, a roughly 50 50 mix, and hit the more prominent edges because we want the nice, sharp highlights to give the look of worn leather. And then we add in some more Gobi Brown, so it's at a roughly 25 to 75 per split. And we edge highlight the sharpest of the edges, as you can see me doing here. Using nice thin coats of paint, we start building the cloak with wall all purple. Again, we reapply the base colour and miss the shaded recesses. When painting cloaks, I like to use nice long brush strokes following the fold. It just makes the whole painting process and highlight process a lot more realistic. Then we add in some squid pink and push the layer into the edges and raise sections of the cloak. Again, nice thin layers here because you want to be able to get that blend and get a nice gradual fade. And then we add in some more squid pink and we do this on the extreme edges as a nice fine line. And we're just looking to build those highlights up and make them nice and gradual.
And then as a final highlight, we grab a squid pink and we paint some very, very tiny lines just to add that final highlight. And this can be seen as an optional extra, really. It's whether or not you feel confident enough to, just to put those lines in. So now we can see how the miniature looks with all of the non-metallic colors highlighted. It's really coming together and I think you'll agree the extra time spent on the cloak was well worth it. Now that the dark tone has darkened down the steel, we can use black metal as our first highlight and we're just painting the plates and ridges most likely to catch our light source, such as the top of the knee pad and around this, these bits here. Then, with a 50-50 mix of thrash metal and black metal, we just catch all of the edges of the armour plates. Again, we're using much thinner lines. And using the same mix, we quickly give the chainmail a quick dry brush, just to add a little bit more depth. Again, this is probably optional, but I just wanted to make the chainmail pop. Then, with pure thrash metal, we just give the most extreme edges a very small highlight. We then use a 50-50 mix of decayed metal and Viking gold to rebase the gold details. Again, we're leaving the recesses shaded. See, I never used gold in my Starks as I wanted to make them look a lot more humble, so it's quite nice to get a chance to add it into a northern house. Then, using pure Viking gold, we start picking out the most prominent sections, just to add a lot more depth. It's really making this miniature come together. Then, as an optional extra, we add in heavy metal to the Viking Gold to give us an extremely sharp highlight. And we really want to use this sparingly, it's just about making it pop. And then we get some bone white to paint in the pupils. We need to get a good tip on the brush, find the best angle to go in, and make sure you steady your hand. And an eclipse grey pupil, again, same principle, make sure you find your angle and steady your hand. And there we go. One finished and menacing looking ruse, painted quite quickly. It's only taken me about half an hour. So let's get him based and come back to see the final results. And here he is, the Leech Lord himself. Now, I have the original roost on a snowy base, which covers my Stark and Bolton armies, so I went for a desert base so I can use him in my Targaryen army. We have achieved a decent level of quality without many crazy techniques, and if you followed along, make sure you post your pics on Instagram or on Facebook, whatever your social choice is, and tag us in it so we can have a look. So I'll leave off with a sentence that no one should ever mutter. I'm going to leave you alone with Roos. I'll be back in a minute. So thanks for your time checking this video, it's greatly appreciated and we hope you've enjoyed our Bolton week and if you have, please pop the video a like. For more A Song of Ice and Fire content, please subscribe to the channel and we'll see you around soon.